I'm going to do something a little different in this video and hit you with a pop quiz as we go along because I'm going to show you a network diagram in just a moment. It's a three switch network, but the cabling is different than the three switch network we did two videos back. Here, two non root switches are also trunking. And all ports are fast Ethernet ports. That's all I'm going to tell you beyond the port numbers, which I'll show you in just a moment because we know what the speed is, the STP port cost, that is, on a fast Ethernet port. So here's our network. And we have switch one. Switch one is the root, and switches two and three, therefore, are non roots. You see the cabling, switch one and switch two are trunking uh, using their fast Ethernet one interfaces. Switch two and switch three are trunking using their fast Ethernet two interfaces. And finally, switch three and switch one trunking, and they're using their fast Ethernet three interfaces. So, what we've got to determine here is what role each port will play here. And if we have enough information to answer all the questions, and if not, we got to go get it. And then finally, we need to say which, at the end of STP convergence, are these ports blocking or forwarding? You know, all six of them. So let's go ahead. I would start a question like this with my non-roots because I have to decide where my root ports are. Switch 2 is going to have one. Switch 3 is going to have one. And while you can't always say that the physically shortest path is the logically shortest path, in this case we can because all of the links are running at the same speed. Watch that on your exam. Watch it on a job interview, watch it on a practice exam because we get so used to seeing 100 meg everywhere that if I gave you this question and one of the links was 10 meg, maybe the answer for the root port would be a little bit different. You're going to see an example of that in the very next video. Here, though, we know that all links are running at the same speed, so we're good there. So which port on switch 2 is going to be the root? It's going to be fast Ethernet 1. And on switch 3, the root port will be fast Ethernet 3 because that's going to come down to path cost. And the path cost for switch 3 to get to the root, it's much cheaper, half, half the price actually, because uh, the root path cost would only be 19 to get there through fast Ethernet 3 on switch 3, where switch 3 was sending frames through 2 and then to 1. Using that as a path, then the cost would be 38. We know that. So we've got those two ports really nailed. Now, what about those two ports on the root bridge? What, ab I know, what about those? Well, what role are they going to play, and will they be in forwarding or blocking mode when STP has finished converging? Well, we know we have no root ports on the root bridge, so they got to be something besides that, and what they'll actually be are designated ports. And we know those on the root bridge, that's one way in our video where we looked at the different ways to tell if you're on the root or not. If all the ports are forwarding there, you know you're on the root, and that's exactly what it is. On switch one, both of those ports will be designated ports, and both of them will be in forwarding mode. So, so far, so good. This is what we have, and it's similar to a topology we looked at before. We've got both ports identified on switch one. We have one port identified on switch two and one on switch three. But what about this other segment? The two non-root switches that are trunking via their fast Ethernet two interfaces. I keep mentioning the numbers, but that's kind of a red herring because the numbers aren't going to come into play. But, uh, you know, so far we got four ports that are all in forwarding mode. We only have two ports left. So if STP is going to do some loop prevention and we actually have a physical loop here in addition to the potential of a logical loop, if we don't put at least one port into blocking mode. Well, we've got all this down on that particular screen. And what I want to point out here is to prevent switching loops. STP only has to put one of the two remaining ports into blocking mode. And what will happen on this segment, just going back to the one connecting two and three, one of these ports will become a DP, a designated port, and it will be in forwarding mode. The other port will be in blocking mode, and it will not be a designated port. It'll actually be an alternate port, as we'll see in the status command. So we're looking at a switch with the lowest root path cost is going to have its port on the shared segment named the designated port. Well, that's fine, except both switches have a root path cost of 19. And if we go back to the diagram, you can see where switch 3 is getting that from. The BPDU is going to be originated by switch 1. What's the RPC there? Zero. 
comes in on fast Ethernet 3 on switch 3, which is a, which is a port with a cost of 19. And there you have your root path cost of 19, 19 plus 0. Same thing goes for switch 2. Switch 1 originates a BPDU. Switch 2 gets it on fast Ethernet 1, sees it as an RPC of 0, tax on 19 for the port that it came in on, and you got a cost of 19. So now what? Hmm, what are we going to do? We need a tiebreaker, and we only have one tiebreaker here. The port belonging to the switch with the lowest bid will become the designated port on this segment. Ta-da! The envelope, please. And what we need here, actually, is the output of show spanning VLAN 1. And now we'll go ahead and bring up the lab, and you can see... Just in case you missed it, I got a little stubborn. <laughs> Apparently, I was not telling the device what it wanted to know. So let's go ahead and head over to switch two. And we can see that the bridge ID priority, we know the priority is 32769. It's going to be the same on switch three. So it all comes down to who has the lowest MAC address. And there it is, 002291BF BD80. It'll probably only go to 0022 to even see which one has the lowest one. Whoops, I thought I'd open that. Never mind. Thank you. And we'll do a show spanning VLAN 1. And we can see the address here is 001. So right there, we don't even have to compare the rest of the MAC addresses because Switch 2's MAC began with 002 right there and switch threes is zero zero one as we saw right here and we can see also that the theory holds up because what do we have here well here we are on switch three and we can see that interface three fast ethernet three is indeed the root as we expected fast ethernet two is the designated port on this particular segment on the trunk that's connecting it to switch two and it is in forwarding mode. If we go back to switch two, could have done an up arrow there. You can see that indeed fast ethernet one is its root as we said, and it's in forwarding mode, but the key is fast ethernet zero two is in alternate role, and that means it's blocking. So the theory absolutely holds up, and we'll go back and we'll take a look at what we end up with. And again, didn't give you any information here really um, we had to go on the switches and get that information about the bid to determine what the designated port was on the shared segment between two and three, but it's just that simple. And, you know, this is a good practice exam question, too. That's why I wanted to walk through this particular way. But again, the beauty of STP is that STP has prevented switching loops by putting only one of our six ports into blocking mode. So there's only one to bring out in case something goes wrong. So that is it for this particular topology. We've got something else brand new coming up next, a couple more STP exercises, and take a breather, and I'll see you there.